Welcome back to the video diary, my attempt to document many of the projects that I become involved with or interest me. I'm sure most people think of CAD software as something used to run 3D printers and CNC machines. But in these exercises, I'm using Fusion 360 to create traditional printed plans. Using parameters to make a small shelf into a larger shelf. Last week, I designed and built a freestanding shelf to hold a dozen banker boxes and the finished product. This week I'm taking those plans and with a few simple changes we'll be making a larger and more complex shelf. The new shelf will be in the same room, over here in this empty space. And here's an early rendering of the new shelf design. I plan on putting heavy objects on this shelf and have added reinforcing braces that are held in place with dados. I'll start by showing the final view of the new shelf in place, and then, if you care to follow, we'll go step by step documenting its creation. I've been planning on making these shelves for months now, and at one time I attempted using Tinkercad, and quickly found that Tinkercad is not made for complex jobs or for printing plans, but sometimes it's good to work through your ideas a number of times. Fast forward to now, or at least last week. This is a modified drawing of the new braced wide shelf based on a copy of the last project. You can see the parameters I use. Notice the dado depth parameter that is half the thickness of the boards. This is a handy one to have calculation wise, as some of the dados will be drawn in profile as sketches, and others will be removed with the combine tool. During the creation of the shelves, I needed to move each one over the depth of the dado, this parameter made the math really easy. This is what my printed plans looked like when I started. And here's how they looked a little while later. Since I was working with some leftover material, the yield had to be calculated in the shop, and I used this paper to keep track of all the cuts. The rig for cutting the shelf dados is just two plywood boards with an edge glued on to make cutting a straight line easier. The shelf thickness template is just another piece of plywood like the shelves themselves. It's important that the templates be checked for good contact with the material, as any gaps here will cause the dados to not be deep enough. Notice how the plan finds another good use. Another template is used to cut the dados for the braces. After the first cut, the shelf and braces are test fit to make sure the templates are accurate. The braces will not be blind dados and will require squaring up with the chisel later, unlike the shelf edges, which are blind dados. On the top shelf, no braces will be required. Here I'm cleaning up the dados on the backboard and going over the edges with a sanding block to help ease assembly. Five of the six shelves needed braces. The bottom shelf will have a thicker brace that will act as a kick panel and close the bottom. This gives a nice professional furniture look. The braces were glued in the day before the big glue up to give them time to fully cure. The braces have all been prepared in advance and the edges were slightly tapered with a belt sander for better fit. A scrap of wood makes a good squeegee to spread out the glue. The clamps will hold the braces in until the board is flipped and a brad nailer will finish the job. Before flipping, a gauge is made to double check that all the braces are properly seated. I learned from the last project and my first time working with an air brad nailer that it's important to mark with a light pencil line along where you want the brads to go. When you're rushing to glue up a big project, you shouldn't be forced to guess where the nails go. The big glue up. 
This part is not very exciting, but every dado needs glue. And 3 quarter inch dados use a lot of it, so don't be stingy. I'm on my knees first applying glue, then going over the glue with a spreading stick, making sure I have a thick film of glue over the bottom and a bit on the sides. Takes a long time, but this is but a sample of the fun. Next, the assembly. But first, I haven't shown the dry fit, which of course you can look at last week's video to get an idea of how a dry fit goes, but you could also assume what happens by the name. I also skipped filming of the brad nailing as I had a panic when, unbeknownst to me, a nail jammed and I wrongfully attributed the problem to an air leak and wasted over an hour on an already busy day and a late night working on my compressor. Know your tools. Since I don't have clamps over 4 feet long, I opted for using ratchet straps. These actually work very well for large projects as they have a bit of stretch to them before you tighten them down. This stretch allows the project to be held together and have enough give to reposition the parts, where metal clamps are either too tight or falling off when loose. The top gave me some trouble and I was forced to link two smaller clamps to make one long one to get enough pressure to close these dados. I've worked with metal more than wood and I always forget to give enough clearance on wood projects and end up having more trouble than I need to get things together. It's a mindset that's hard to shake. The project needs to be turned as each side receives the brad nails. Here, sitting upright for the first time, the last of the nails are done. My chiseled corners fit nicely. I'm not big on using chisels, so this shot pleases me. This bottle of glue was full two days ago. We used about three quarters of a bottle or about six dollars worth of glue. Voila, the finished product. 
Thanks for watching. Next week we'll make the final shelf, a fancy corner unit. Thank you.